Data classes were added to Python 3.7 with PEP 557. I'm using them basically all over the place in my code example, so you could kind of call me a data classes junkie, I guess. I like them a lot, but there are some things that data classes are just not that good at. For example, data validation or converting between different data types. Now, there are some alternatives to data classes, for example, the Pydantic package, which I covered already a while ago in another video. But the data classes package itself is based on another package called Ethers. And Ethers, apart from not being a really nice thing to say in Dutch to somebody, is also much more extensive in terms of feature set than data class. So we should definitely take a closer look. So today I'm going to implement the same thing using data classes, Pydantic and Ethers. And then I'm going to give you an overview of the pros and cons of each of these options. So you can make a better choice for your own project. Picking the technology you're going to use is only one aspect of starting a new project. There are lots of other things to think about. So if you want to learn more about how to design a piece of software from scratch, I have a free guide for you. You can get this at ironlotcodes slash design guide. It contains the seven steps I take whenever I design a new piece of software. And hopefully it helps you avoid some of the mistakes I made in the past. So ironlotcodes slash design guide, the link is also in the description of this video. Now, if you're ready, let's dive in. The example that I'm going to use today is one I've used sort of before it's a simple e-commerce system with orders and products. The code I have here uses data classes to model this. There's a product data class that you see here. And we have, if I scroll down, an order data class. There's also an enumerated value that represents the status of an order. And as you can see, I'm using the string enum here from Python 3.11 that automatically generates strings for us depending on these values, which is quite useful. Now the product class has name, category, shipping weight, unit price, and tax percentage. By the way, I could have also picked an enumerated value for the category. I, for the time being, I simply kept it as a string. And with the data class, you simply specify these instance variables here at the top of the class and the type hint is then going to determine the type of the instance variable. Order is set up in a very similar way. So that's also a data class. It has a status. It has a creation date with a default value, the date of today. And products in the order is a list of products that, that refers back to this class. And default, that's the empty list. You see that I use the field function here. It comes from the data classes package. And there we specify a default factory as a list. So that creates the empty list for us. Then there's a couple of convenience methods and properties like a method for adding a product. And there's properties for computing the subtotal, the tax that you paid, the total price that you paid, that's a subtotal plus the tax and the total shipping weight. And then I have a main function where I create a couple of products, a banana, mango, and an expensive mango. And then I create the order. So the status is open by default. And then for each product in this list, I'm going to add it to the order. And then I simply print out some things. I compare two products using the double equals. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I print some prices, the total order price, subtotal, the value in taxes, and the total weight of the order. You may notice that for prices, I use integers. That's actually quite common to do that uh, in this case. An integer represents the sm smallest unit possible of a currency. So if this is in dollars, then this would be dollar cent. So if you would have a product with a unit price of 100, that would be a product of $1. And here you see we have the banana, which costs $2.15. And the reason this is done is because if you use something like a float, for example, for currencies, then you have all kinds of imprecisions when doing computations. And with integers, this works much better. Uh, bigger payment providers like Stripe actually also rely on integers to represent monetary amounts. So the first thing that's interesting is how comparisons between objects happen. What you can do with the data classes indicate which instance variables should be taken into account when you compare objects. And you do that via the compare argument. So here, in case of the product, if we want to compare two products, we only want to compare the name and the category and we want to ignore the other things. And you do that by setting compare to true, which is the default value. If you don't want an instance variable like shipping weight, for example, to be taken into account in the comparison, you set compare to false like I've done here. So when I run this code, then this is what we get. We see that 
if we compare mango and expensive mango, these are not considered the same. And let's see why that happens. Well, we see that the name and the category are actually not the same because the case is different. If I were to change this to lowercase mango and lowercase fruit, and then we run the code again, then you're going to see that the comparison is true. So these are considered the same products. Now, of course, you can simply change this behavior by changing the value of these compare arguments. So for example, if you do want to make a distinction between mangoes of different prices, you could set this value of compare to true. And then when you run the code again, the comparison ends up as being false. Here I have more or less the same example, but then built with Adders. There's a couple of extra things here that I'll talk about in a minute that are related to validation. But if you scroll down, we see that we also have a class product. But here, instead of a data class, we're using the define decorator that comes from Adders. And you can also see that in case of the product, we have comparison of the name and the category. And this is one of the nice things about Adders that actually comparison is a bit more extensive than with data classes. So in a data class example, the only thing we can do is indicate whether comparison should be done for that instance variable or not. Whereas in Atters, we actually have control over how these things should be compared. In this case, we want to make sure that when we compare a name and a category, that we convert it to lowercase so that the case is basically ignored in the comparison. And there's a couple of other things here related to validation that I'll talk about in a minute. So when I do the comparison here between mango and expensive mango, which has a different case, then you see that it actually compares as being the same. So apart from the difference between how objects are being compared, you also see that there's a lot of similarities between Atters and data classes. Though data class use the data class decorator, Atters uses define, but you still define instance variables as part of a class in the same way using the type hint. And just like data classes, Atters also has a field function where you supply a factory. Second area in which these packages differ is validation. And that's where Pydantic really comes into play. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't be an editor, give it a like. It helps spread the word on YouTube. I have yet another version of the same example here, but this uses Pydantic instead of editors or data classes. So we have again the same order status enum. I have a product. That's a base model subclass. That's how Pydantic works. It uses a inheritance relationship instead of a decorator. So in that way, it's really different from Atters and data classes. But you also specify the instance variables using type hints like so. And same for the order. You can simply specify default values like this. Pydantic, just like Atters and data class, also has a field function that we can supply with a default factory for an empty list. So that's all exactly the same. Now, what Pydantic doesn't have is an easy way to modify comparison between objects. Now, of course, you can always override the equals dunder method, but that kind of defeats the purpose of using a package like data classes where you can actually customize those things. So again, here I have my three products, banana mango and an expensive mango, and we get exactly the same result as in the other examples. What's nice about Pydantic is that it has lots of options for validations, and that goes beyond what you can do with, for example, adders. And one of the things that it does is that it has a couple of special types that already have some of that validation included. I have a couple of examples here. So for example, the shipping weight, I use the positive float type. So this uses Pydantic's validation to make sure that if we create a product, that the shipping weight is actually positive and that it's a float. And for the unit price, I do the same thing. So it should be a positive integer. And the text percentage should be a float. And there I can use the field function to specify that this should be greater or equal to zero or less than or equal to one. So it should be a percentage, basically. This is very intuitive. For example, if we have the banana product here and I change the shipping weight to, let's say, a negative floating point value, when I try to run this code, you see we get an error, validation error from Pydantic that shipping weight should be greater than zero. So this is done simply by the type hints. And Pydantic has lots of these helpful types to make validation easy. For example, they have an email validation type. They have a type for validating credit card numbers. They have lots of different types for validating positive and negative numbers. And there's a lot more options that I'm not going to cover in this video today. If you want to do validation with data classes, data classes in principle doesn't really have validation built in. So you kind of have to build it yourself. So what I did here in the product class, for example, is that you can have a post 
init method where you do some validation. So in this case, I'm checking that unit price is positive, that the shipping weight is positive, and that the tax percentage is between zero and one. And that raises a value error. And this should probably be this because 100% and 0% is also allowed. Now, this will do the job, but obviously Pydantic has a lot more options here. With Atters, you can also do validation. It's not as extensive as Pydantic, but you can still do it more easily than with data classes. So here, for example, I have my product class where I have shipping weight, unit price, and tax percentage. And with the field function, you can specify a validator. And in this case, I'm indicating that shipping weight should be an instance of float. So this is basically built into Atters. And I'm also using the positive number validator function. And that's a function that I created myself. So that's what you see here. So this gets an instance, an Atters instance, and an attribute, a string attribute, and then a value that should be in this case, we can use it for int or float. And then I'm simply checking the value. So this is sort of how it's done in data class, but at least Atters has a notion of what validation is. And same thing for percentage values. So I'm just checking that the value is between 0 and 1 or equal to 0 or 1. And here also for unit price, tax percentage, I use the validator arguments to supply these validators. As an alternative to supplying validators as arguments to the field function, you can also use a decorator in Atters. Here's an example of what that looks like. So what are some of the pros and cons of data classes versus Atters versus Pydantic? Well, first, let's take a look at data classes. So one of the main advantages, I think, of data classes is that it's a standard built-in library into Python. So you don't need to install any dependencies for it. You can just use it right away. And because it's part of the standard library, other tools and packages might have better support for it than for either Atters or Pydantic. I mean, some tools also build directly on those packages. For example, FastAPI works really well in combination with Pydantic and their validation system. I did a video about FastAPI last week, by the way. If you want to watch that, check the link at the top. Data classes also have some disadvantages. For example, the version of data classes is tied to the version of Python. So if you want to use a new feature in data classes, well, you're going to have to upgrade your Python version. And that might be conflicting with other libraries that you're using that are not yet compatible with the new Python version. For example, the slots option was only added in 3.10. So if you use that, you need to use Python 3.10 or newer. Another con is that data classes is sort of a lesser version of Atters and why not use Atters in that case since it has more features? And finally, because it's directly tied to Python as part of the standard library, it means that development of data classes also goes much slower. That might also be an advantage because then data class developers are going to be way more careful to make sure that everything integrates perfectly with the version of Python that it's tied to. Now, what about Atters? Well, first, like data classes, it supports typing. It's a superset of data class. So if you've used data class for a while and you want to move up your code a notch, you can easily switch to Atters and it's going to feel very comfortable for you. Also, Atters has lots of extra features like better support for validation than data classes. It has more control over object comparison, which is really nice. And finally, it's trusted by NASA for the Mars mission. So who wouldn't want to use a package like that, right? Some of the cons of Atters, well, it's an external dependency, so you need to install it before you can use it. Also, there is some confusion in that there was an older version of Atters which had less logical naming for attributes and things like that, but that has been changed. And the name of the package has also been changed from Atter to Atters. And that's why Atters with the S at the end is also called the modern Atters. Another potential con of Atters is that you can use types to specify the instance variables, but you don't have to. You can also use functions such as confloat, which kind of go around the whole typing system. So in that sense, it's not as strict as the built-in data classes. And then finally, Pydantic, it's really a package focused on validation, and it's very good at that and has lots of helpful tools and classes, functions to 
support that. If you're using other tools like Fast API, Podentic integrates very nicely with that, and you can use it very intuitively. Podentic is also more strict than Atterns as it enforces these type hints at runtime and also does validations with them. And finally, if data is invalid, you're going to get a useful error message. Some of the cons of Pydantic, well, like Atterns, it's also an external dependency, so you need to install it before you can use it. Another con is that it's not entirely clear when validations happen in Pydantic. Does it only happen when an object is instantiated or does validation also run when you change an instance variable? If you figured out how this works exactly, let me know in the comments. Another thing is that as opposed to using decorators, which I think is a really nice way to deal with this, uh, like Atters and data class are doing, Pydantic relies on inheritance. And in some sense, that doesn't really fit with favor composition over inheritance. And one of the problems is that base model, which is the superclass that you inherit from, has already a bunch of methods and things uh, implemented. And if you accidentally override some of these methods, then that might lead to unwanted behavior. And finally, there's a few minor things that could be improved in Pydantic, like for example, that the string dunder method doesn't print out the class name, which would actually be useful if it did. For example, here, if I try to print the banana, that's weird, printing a banana. You see, when I run this, it only prints the instance variable names and not the actual class name. And I think that would actually be helpful. So here are some thoughts about when you should use which one. Well, data classes is from the standard library. If you don't need things like advanced comparison or validation, then I think data class is perfectly fine. I'm using that all the time and it works really well. If you need more control over your class definitions, you want to have more advanced object comparison, you use some validation and you don't mind installing an external dependency, then Atters is a great way to go. And finally, if you really need extremely powerful validation features, then Pydantic is hard to beat. It's also more strict with regards to data types, which I like a lot. Though I do find the pity that Pydantic relies on inheritance and not on decorators like Atters and data classes do. So I hope you like this comparison that gave you some food for thought about which of these packages you should use in your project. Now, like I said, even though Pydantic and Atterns are both more powerful than data classes, data class is actually still really pretty good. And I did a video a while ago about data class where I dive more into detail about what you can do with it. And you can check that video out here. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next week.